So much of succeeding in life is, is getting yourself or training yourself to do the things that you know you have to do even when you don't feel like doing them. We all love to do the easy and the stuff that we love. No one likes knocking on doors. No one likes dialing on the darn phone. No one likes getting kids. I don't like rejection, but I eat it for breakfast. I don't like it, but it, it makes me stronger. And so if you were going to talk to a brand new agent today, what would be the one bit of advice that you would give them from your experience? Whatever the, I would develop a, the, whatever metric makes sense for the type of insurance that you're selling and whatever lead source that you're giving them is I would you have to get them into the habit of dialing or out. It's got to be top of the funnel. Mm -hmm. People are scared to dial the phone, hmm. scared to go to whatever the, the, the reason things are doing you, whatever, whatever method you're using, whether it's uh, incoming leads and calling the back. I mean, that that is as soon as here's what happens. As soon as you stop prospecting, you start wringing the towel dry on your existing pipeline. And that's when you start trying to turn nose into yeses. When you start trying to take every person, because there's no one left to speak to, so you, you just spend so much time hoping you get that person that's really not right for it. You're trying to you know, shove a square peg in a round hole versus continuing every single day, allotting X number of hours, whatever amount that, that block makes sense for what you're doing, mm -hmm. and just get them just, and, and it's gotta be not like broken, a block of time, you start and you just do that outbound prospecting, that's the ticket. I mean, and, and unless they do that, there's, there's no shortcut for that. There's just no, we created all these top producers by sheer cold call numbers. You, you I do, even like I, I Recruit for like the top. This one of the company, companies I have to recruit for. We do it for everything: insurance, door to door sales. The worst company, great, uh, wonderful company, but the hardest to work on: Moxie Pest Control. Door to door sales and pest control. No one wants that job, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, yet we recruit, we persevere. These kids are knocking on hundreds of doors a day and getting three yeses, and now life is made on that. But if they can do that, they can master the art of doing that. That's the kid that's like, that's talk about the, like the, the plumber's license. Like it's that ability, it's, it's can you get yourself, you know, I didn't say it up there today, but one of the big things I always instill in, in, in young people is that, I hate to say that because I'm, I still feel young, but, but, but um, is that, you know, so much of succeeding in life is, is getting yourself or training yourself to do the things that you know you have to do, even when you don't feel like doing them. We all love to do the easy and the stuff that we love. No one likes knocking on doors. No one likes dialing on the darn phone. No one likes getting changed. I don't like rejection, but I eat it for breakfast. I don't like it, but it, it makes me stronger. I, I've trained, I learned over the years by starting, I started off as a door-to-door -door salesman. I was, my first job was door-to-door, -door. real sales was door-to-door. -door. And I remember this one night that came to define who I was as a salesperson was I went all day. I was already the top producer in the industry. You know, I was already breaking records right from the start. And it's like maybe a month into it, and I just had this terrible day, dry. No one, I was selling meat and seafood. No one wanted the food. Door after door, it was the winter in New York. It's freezing, it's raining, I'm shivering to death, it's dark out, and I'm still knocking on doors. My knuckles are bleeding, I'm not. I said, I am not gonna stop until I make a sale, at least one sale, all right? By like seven o'clock at night, I knocked on some door. I'm soaking like a puppy dog was wet, right? Like I was 20 at the time, 21 years old. I was 12, right? And some woman opens the door. And she's like, "What are you doing here?" She goes, "I said I'm at the industry. She's like, just come inside and try out. I'll be back in a second. And then it's like multi-million dollar mansion back in, and she leaves me there by myself. <laughs> Different generations, right? Don't do that. I'm sitting there on like a chair for like 30 minutes. She comes back 30 minutes later. I'm in this big mansion myself with her daughter. Was like in ballet class. She's like, all right, what do you want now? What's the spice? I like the little meat and seafood to you. She's like, I don't need meat and fish. I said, listen, I'm, I can't get back to that. Fine, just unload it. Took the whole truck from me. Oh, a whole entire, wow. she, Trish just gave it away, the food. The point <laughs> is, is that it just taught me this. It was I'm, something I'll never forget. You know, is that, is that, is that no matter how many times people say no to me, it's just one closer to yes. I almost like got to the point where with, um, with brokerage, where it was so much, like you could actually track it so closely. I have them track their pipeline so close. How many dials do you have to make to get 10 qualified leads? 
And if you get 10 qualified leads over time and average it, how many of those are you close? So if you could take a kid and have him dial the phone 300 times a day to get 10 leads, so you could close of those 10, 10 a month. If you just close 10 accounts a month, you made a million dollars your first year. Just through that. So what would happen was, is once you established, we knew what those numbers were, I'd say, listen, it doesn't matter whether someone says yes or no. You're getting paid for every dial. Mm -hmm. They say, no, you make 50 bucks. Boom. Thank you. Have a nice day. Because you know your numbers. You just, if you just dial enough phone numbers, you're going to get, because over time, those averages do play out. So when you really know the numbers, I, I would urge you to track your numbers so you can say so on. It doesn't matter what any one individual says. You're just playing the numbers game here. If you hit 200 doors, 200 phone calls, you're going to get every, over time, one person, what's that, what? So now divide that by the people who said no, you made $10 for every no. It doesn't matter what they say. If the people have the confidence that they can close the yeses when they get them, that's the key. I knew that I could close the yes when I got them. I'll try to follow up with that. Um, <laughs> so my question is basically around your sales meetings, very specific. So I've got um, an agency with about 150 call center agents, half W2, half 1099, kind of built up the same model of taking people, making 50, $60,000 a year, trying to make them $100,000 mm -hmm. a year, dialing all day. I've been doing it now for a little over eight years, and I started with daily meetings that turn into weekly, sometimes turn into weekly into monthly, and kind of leaving advice for me or an agency owner. How do you get out of the same type of you're saying the same things over and over every day to get better at a sales meeting for those individuals? I, I think that you're supposed to say the same things every single day okay. because people need to hear them again and again. Now, obviously, you could say them. Oh, listen, I, I, you know, so every business, every agency has its own personality. And that personality has to reflect the owners, the people in charge of it. My company was a reflection in terms of like, I had this really strong ability to speak. It was, a, it was a natural talent I had. So I played on my own talent, which was like motivation, teaching salespeople. So for me, that was like, you know, I, that was my biggest strength was that. So I did it all the time. For me, twice a day, every day, I never had shit to say. It was just like, you know, and a lot of the stuff, I was inventing the straight line as I was doing it. So I was inventing this new way of selling back in the late 80s, right? And, and what I found, is that, so here's the way I run meetings, and I really would strongly suggest that you do this in your meetings, is I never went broad. I always went narrow and deep. I would, t t the meeting would be about, I want you to be able to say this sentence really well. One sentence. Like, you know, sort of believe me, you'll be very, very impressed. Sound fair enough? And I literally, like, torture each person to be able to say one thing really well like, you know, like, how do you mix these tonalities of certainty and sincerity with this reasonable, you know, sound good, Jim? Sound fair enough? Like, and making, I would get them so skilled up, but I would never just talk about, it would be like, um, not a broad, it's like, no, I want you to learn this particular thing today and really dig into it. And I had the role play, was role playing and role playing, more role playing. Man, my boot, I run these, you know, I, I recruit salespeople, 90% of my boot camps is role playing. It's not, it's not just um, like, we don't teach them. I have, a, I have a home study course that they get that, that's their homework at night, which is sort of the foundation on the principles and the logic. When they're in class with us, I have, I have facilitators, they are in groups, they are role playing. Tonality, how they sound great, you know, because I'm telling you, that is just, that's what wakes up, the, wakes up that voice inside these kids and it makes a huge difference. So you put one, a trained cold call and next to an untrained one, and it's just, it's just night and day. So I focus on massive role playing. And also I always would mix um, motivation and skill strength together. So it, it would always be like, you know, I could start off with motivation a little bit. I frame the topic, teach something, and then end with motive, you know, two together again and again and again. And we never, you know, sometimes it would just be feel good meetings. It was fun. Like, you know, you, the movie was funny. It was meant that we were, we had fun. We made it into fun. You know, it was make, make, make fun of a lot of people. And that was a different time and place. You know, <laughs> things you can't do anymore, we used to do, right? <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> you know, so, but, but those things were like, they were the glue that held the sales force together. Everyone making fun of everybody else. It was like a real team spirit. And um, 
And it was just, you know, it was just amazing. If you would ask people that worked there, they'd all tell you it was the greatest experience. They loved going to work, you know? So that was it. Appreciate it. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. JB the Wolf is in the house. Dude, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it, buddy. My pleasure. 8% Nation, we have the Wolf of Wall Street, Mr. Jordan Belfort in. We're doubling down, right? Because he's going to be in Vegas with us, but we're doubling down and we got him on virtual.